Ali Farhansi now joins us on the phone line. So first of all, this is a city of Bangalore that we're talking about. It's supposed to be a cosmopolitan city. Second, here we have a 13-year-old girl who was raped, forced to bear a child. She is not being allowed in school because the parents of her classmates think that she is a bad influence. My simple question to you is, the NCPCR and the NCW, where are they at this moment? Why aren't they stepping in and ensuring that this girl is at least allowed a return to some decent life? Yeah, I quite agree. I, I don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're sleeping. Mm, they, they must have been up late night at some party. The second thing is that I find it disgusting and disgraceful that we have two codes of conduct in this in this country. The constitution is one, which is very clear that everyone is equal and gets equal rights. And then you have things like the cops and people like the school who say, no, we decide what is right. The Constitution of India decides what is right in India. And I wish every citizen of this country, whether they are English speaking, Hindi speaking, Tamil, Bengali, Punjabi, whatever, understands that. I don't think the government has done enough to bring the essential elements of the Constitution into teaching in every single school, every mm. single Pathshala in this country. And that's why we mm. have a double morality. A morality set by old-fashioned, outdated ideas, you know, where mm. women are supposed to be subjugated, where girls who have a pregnancy therefore are to be ostracized. This kind of thing must stop, and the only way it will stop if the government brings uh, the 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 the, the uh, guiding principles of the constitution mm. into classrooms. We must Absolutely. all realize what is this country. What are its guiding principles? And then we will begin to change our mindset. Absolutely. It's leave aside the reality. Even if we leave aside the outrage, this is the girl's right. We're talking about the RTE. This is her right to education. Why is she being denied it? Alec Padamsi, just stay on with us. Let's listen to the voice of her father who first had to undergo the trauma of having his his 13-year-old girl raped, bearing a child, and now she can't even get an education. This is what he faces every single day. नहीं ये स्कूल में स्कूल में आके ये अमीन भाई कर को है ना उनके तरफ से डर रहे और आंसर ये कर कई ये सलीम सलीम आ को ऐसा क्या क्या कि बोले आ करते बच्चे आंगे बाहर है ना ऐसा ऐसा वो उन उनके ऊपर एक्शन नहीं ले कोई और आ को ये माहौले के अंदर आ को जरा हमारे तरफ मैं क्या तो इंसाफ की बात कर � और गलती समझती हैं और ये बच्ची को ऐसा गलती करो अगर को कौन सिखा को देखो ही वह छोकरे को मालूम नहीं अब उसे शादी करो अगर को बोले मैं शादी let me go back to my colleagues in Bangalore. Rohini Swami, uh, the, what, what's happening in Bangalore might not be technically a khat panchayat, but they're certainly behaving like one. They are trying to dictate what this girl who's a rape victim is supposed to do or not, whether she should get married, whether she's allowed to have an education. Why can't the police step in and ensure that this girl is given her right, that she is allowed inside the classroom and she can study there? Well, there's a desperate plea that is being made, not just by the girl, her parents, not only to the police, but to a lot of social organizations saying, let her go to school, let her study, because when we would speak to the victim, she said she, what has happened to her is bad enough, she's traumatized, now she wants to study, go uh, go ahead in life, she wants to become a chartered accountant, she's very clear in her thoughts, but she's saying that nobody is coming forward, stepping forward to help her out. Very clearly, she's even sub submitted a letter to the police commissioner seeking protection because they feel the whole family has been threatened by the society. They say when she walks out, she gets a lot of snipe remarks from other people as, as saying that she should not be going to school. We did hear just now two parents very clearly saying that she would be a possible bad influence on the other children. She is a very young girl. She's very young at heart. She's very young in her mind. She does not know what has happened to her. But the parents here who are putting forward their views, they're saying that they feel that the other young children who are interact with her and talk to her will get influenced. The question mm -hmm. that is to be raised is whether the school authorities will step in and say that this girl has to be protected because what has happened to her is absolute injustice in terms of what happened to her earlier in life. She's a mm. rape victim and that she's trying to get out of that trauma and she's trying to concentrate on education to go forward in life. And also the parents are trying to reach out to the other parents and trying to tell them that if they are a little more broad-minded and allow this girl to study, maybe this kind of an example will be set in society that people are who, who, are, who are especially mm. rape victims in such a tender young age, that they will not be ostracized by and society. 